This is why we do stress tests. In three, two, one, go. Okay, I need you and your bow. Follow me. Let's do this. First shooter, put your first arrow on the 50 yard line. Go ahead. Today you are afforded an opportunity to work on shooting under duress. Some of you already have a degree of target panic where you have anxiety about getting rid of that arrow. It's uncomfortable with the pin that's moving and you're like, whenever the pin is where I want it to be, I'm gonna send it, okay? Whenever that pin is on the bull, cause this is my only opportunity I'm ever gonna get in my entire life. I gotta make this opportunity happen right now. There's the pin, I'm gonna let it go, send it. That whole anxiety thing, I'm not trying to like basically make happen in today where you're like, walk out of here even in a worse position of anxiety. Does that make sense? So we're not trying to amplify anxiety. In fact, we, we're trying to get reps at mitigating anxiety. And so I'm going to induce stress. This is a stress test. I'm going to get your heart rate elevated and I want you to be able to keep your shit together. Okay, that's what we're doing. No one does this at home. You know what we do at home? We wear flip flops, shorts, shirt off, group, Dudley groups. You're like, knock on, look at these sick group, you know, put on Instagram. We're all, the, we're all backyard heroes. Guilty, right? I am too, like we're so good in our backyard. This ain't your backyard, right? And the mountains out west are definitely not your backyard. Three, two, one, go. And your bow and run. Agreed? Okay, with that being said, we're not coming here to, in, to like endorse anxiety. We're trying to get reps at mitigating, so here's what we're gonna do to do that. I'm gonna ask you to take controlled shots. I'm gonna ask you to put blinders on and not worry about the guy next to you if he's two steps ahead or his shot just broke and I just started my shot process. This is an opportunity for you to stay in your lane you do you, and you execute your shot process. You go through your script. Well deserved, what can I say? I'm a son of a bitch for all the things I've done. But every time I try to make peace with my enemies, I lose my patience and I lose my mind. Whoever gets on this, whoever is in front of me. But why did it have to be her this time? Oh, no. When you drove here today, there is a yellow line and a white line. When you drove here today in your truck, did you look at the yellow line and the white line the whole way here steering? Were you worried about it? Hell, you probably hardly even paid attention to driving. Driving is like aiming. It's automatic. Your autonomic system's taking care of that. Don't worry about the pen. You, if your eyes are looking at what you wanna hit, your body can automatically steer the wheel without you thinking about it. You just keep your eyes down the road. You just keep your eyes on the target. Agreed? So then what are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be talking to yourself, staying present, staying in the moment, walking yourself through your scripted, blueprinted shot process to stay in a controlled shot environment and to not send some shitty, uncontrolled, trigger punching shot that's gonna cost you a bull or two days worth of looking for a bull that you're not gonna find and losing time that you're not gonna get back. 30 split lunges, knee touches the ground. Two, or three, just like that. 
this debt to pay You wouldn't last one day Walking in my shoes Harder work and harder play And I was just starting to like you But I, I, I've been known to lose my temper When I'm tempted to But otherwise I'm a pretty nice guy And if you knew all the places That they sent me to You would not to avoid my kind Down the three, two, one, go. You'll start at this. You will run all the way down 50 yards to that table. Your partner's gonna hold your bow. You're gonna run back and you're gonna take a shot from here 50 yards. This will be the easiest shot you get to take, believe it or not. It'll be the furthest, it'll, but it'll be the easiest. Make it a good one. Once you're done taking that 50 yard shot, hand your bow to your judge. You're gonna run down and touch the table and then you're gonna run this way to the 35 yard line. So come on down, set an arrow down. Once you've reached this, this is a 35 yard shot. You're going to perform 30 air squats. Air squats, can you demonstrate? Okay, good. Then you're gonna execute, it's time to shoot. This shot will be a 35 yard kneeling shot. You can have all your weight on your knees up front. You can sit your weight back on your heels. Hell, you can even have one knee. I don't care. But I want you to take a kneeling shot. And then I want to caveat that. I've got a lot of short guys like me in this group. We don't go on our knees to take shots on elk. Leave that to these tall, jolly green giant guys, okay? Elk's gonna see him way before he sees me, right? Being short is an advantage as an elk hunter, in my opinion. I never take a knee for elk. I'm always standing all the way up with something um, behind me, not in front of me, covering up my outline, all right? That's why camo's important, but it's not as important as like getting something behind you and holding still and knowing when to draw. So short guys, I always use this excuse to be like, you'll see a lot of people when they're doing elk calling setups, maybe their collars back there, and they're like, all right, I'm gonna take away most of my shooting lanes, right? No, we wanna have you want to be able to pivot and, and be able to move into your shooting lanes, right? And then you'll have a diaphragm call in your mouth to stop that elk when it's in your lane. After you've done your kneeling shot, guess what you're going to do after that? You're going to run back down to that damn table, okay? And then you're going to run back to 25 yards. This will be your last shot. Again, your partner will be holding your bow. You're never running with the bow. Once you get to this, you're going to do 30 split lunges. 30 split lunges is just jumping lunges where you're just gonna trade. So one, two, three, four, five. You'll do 30. Some of you, some of you will have your legs give out. It's kind of weird, I don't know what's going on, but some of you just are deconditioned is what I'm calling it. And that's okay to be deconditioned February because we have time. It's something that you can fix, right? So don't be like, I've had someone in every group's legs give out on them. And I, and I have, it's, it's been a little surprising, but I'm also like, well, this is a good time for, to find out that your legs are not really in the best shape and we can do something about it. So it's all positive, right? And then once you've completed your 30, you're gonna take a 25 yard shot. But first, you're gonna pull your bow back. And once you come to full draw, your judge is going to be like, okay, timestamp on. You have one minute of elapsed time to hold the bow back at full draw. What am I trying to mimic? You need one more step and that tag is punched, and that glory is coming. We're talking Instagram, lights, photographer, thousands of followers, likes, comments, hashtag, um, no, I'm joking. That's the only reason we do this. That's the only reason we do it. We're talking a freezer full of delicious, high protein, God's gift to you, like the greatest protein source on, like all your hard work paying off in one step. Can you keep that bow pulled back? Once one minute is done, judges, I want you to say green light. And that is your indication to hammer, rattlesnake that trigger right away, right? No, that means green light. It is time to continue on your shot process. So wherever your shot process goes from the anchor to when you say, here I go or whatever, but you're going to engage the shot process from there. Again, this is just an opportunity for you to mitigate the stress, the anxiety that comes with that opportunity that you recognize 
Can you stay in the moment? Can you keep your stuff together and really execute a good shot? The scoring is not only, we're not only rewarding like who can do all the things the fastest, we're rewarding accuracy as well. So you see the top target, you see the circle in the middle, that is your kill zone. Anything in the kill zone shaves 10 seconds off per arrow. Anything outside that kill zone, we're gonna add 10 additional seconds to your time. If you don't even hit the target, which means you're gonna ruin your arrow for sure, we're gonna add 30 additional seconds. It does not pay to be the fastest, but the least accurate. It also doesn't pay to be the most accurate, but the slowest. I'm looking for that middle ground. You guys ready? This is fun, all right. Heat one, hand your bow to your partner. Partner, get your clock ready. Hamstrings, stay attached to the bone. We're not pulling hamstrings on this movement. I feel like we need music on this, man. In three, two, one, go. How you doing? Have you, Good. Ever, have you done anything like that before? No. What did you think now that you've done it? It's a lot harder than you think it would be. Yeah. Going down and back. Was it bothering you that the pin was moving so much? Oh yeah, you couldn't hold it still. But then you also, you know, steering, aiming, having automatic, just controlling your breathing and going through your process. Did you, did you feel like you got rushed, the anxiety to just get rid of the arrow? Were you, were you battling? Were you battling? A little bit. Yeah. I did definitely calm down a little bit. Okay. Cool. Trevor, you ever done anything like that before? Uh, not with shooting ball. I work out, but yeah. not like that. You guys, do you feel the anxiety? Because the pin is not going to hold still. This is like shooting in high winds. It's just annoying because you just have to know that the pin is going to move. And you got to be okay with that and still execute your individual shot process. I don't want you blacking out and reverting back to get rid of the arrow. I want you being present in the moment, staying conscious and really dialing in your blueprint. If it's not blueprinted, it won't be when a big bull steps out. 639, uh, 709, right? Because he missed the target completely. Yep. 709 is his final time. All right, heat two. Dude, this is awesome, man. Like This is something that anyone can do. I'm trying to convert people from being backyard all-stars to integrating this every once in a while as part of their preparation because, uh, I mean, I don't think I've ever shot an elk without a high heart rate and a backpack and stress and duress fatigue. So here it is, all in one package.